What New Skin is all about at the end of the day is providing empowerment opportunities for you and for everyone in the United States and in the 49 countries in which we do business, providing you with an ability to start your own business and to do it in under five minutes. Research shows that social commerce is projected to become nearly three and a half trillion dollars as a marketplace by 2028. Three and a half trillion dollars is nearly half of the total retail commerce marketplace globally. You know, New Skin has always been a people-to-people -people business. We are people-powered. In a time when customers are increasingly online, doing everything possible to maintain and enhance those personalized new skin approach and relationships, that one-on-one -on -one approach gives you a real advantage because that one-on-one -on -one has now turned into one-to-many thanks to the power of social commerce. Hello, I'm Mark Bartlett, one of the scientists here at NuSkin, one of quite a few scientists that we have here. We have all sorts of awards, about 30 patents on our inventions in the nutrition and skin area, including 28 patented technologies that we use. We want you to know we're focused on contributing to a cleaner, safer, and more sustainable future for our planet, one product at a time. We've set a goal to change all of our packaging to be recycled, recyclable, reusable, reduced or renewable by the end of 2030. Four decades of research, innovation, creativity, and an amazing dynamic field that's ready for Empower Me. Empower Me is about empowering you to build your business in a simple and expansive way. When you have social commerce coming together with personalization, along with IoT connected devices and the beauty and wellness industries coming together, we're talking close to trillions of dollars that are at an intersection. Empower Me will help more people achieve the life they want and deserve. We've paid out more retail commissions this past year than ever before in our 37 plus year history. And it's this upfront earnings opportunity that's fueling most of our record growth in the Americas region. Many people are working hard to qualify for our success trips. Recently, I returned from our biggest success trip in our history. These trips are a chance for us to come together and celebrate and recognize your significant accomplishments in your business. I truly believe there's never been a better time to join us. We have the right products, we have a compelling earnings opportunity, and a community of passionate, talented people who are committed to making a difference in the world. There's a place for everybody at New Skin. So New Skin has been able to create markets, create uh, additional successes. They've also been able to uh, spotlight markets. Those of you who have uh, participated in New Skin, going back to the opening of Japan, uh, you understand the implication of actually looking at a market and saying, we're going to go into that market. We're going to develop new networks in that market. As a consequence, we're going to raise the, the level of successes, not just for the company, but for uh, the distributors and for those people who are uh, developing networks. And uh, again, if you go back and look at those numbers, uh, NuSkin has been able to create a success in Japan that's been dynamic. After a couple of years, we did $600 million in sales. Uh, that's the equivalent of a billion dollars in today's inflation-adjusted uh, uh, American dollars. And so as a consequence, you can see that uh, company action uh, uh, in terms of identifying markets, in terms of developing markets, uh, can produce great successes. Uh, in a very real sense, uh, NewSkin was part of the globalization of trade. We moved out in the 80s uh, and into uh, the 90s, and we participate now in somewhere around 53, 54 uh, countries. And the reason is for the last 40 years, uh, the globalization of trade has been the biggest uh, element within uh, the economic history of the world. And we participated in that in part because the company saw the implications and the technical advances that they participated in in the creation of a real-time opportunity where they paid you in the same month that uh, volume is created in Japan and in Indonesia and in China, is that that was an advance for the industry. 
uh, that Nuskin led. And they created a globalized business that, again, created tremendous successes for those people who saw the opportunity and, uh, and that uh, then utilized their knowledge of the business to go into new geographic markets. And so it doesn't take much more than a casual look to understand that going into new markets is the foundation uh, for additional revenue, additional income for the participants. And even more important, for those people who are new in the business that uh, then uh, look at a new market and that they create a, a revenue stream through the creation of a, uh, a network, those people get the biggest return. In other words, everyone here who has a group that goes into any of these four countries, you know those first people who laid the foundation in those countries are the ones that have gotten the biggest return. And that, that's just the way it works. You, uh, you go into a new market, you lay the foundation, and you get the benefit of uh, participating in something that is new. And that, uh, that, uh, that is what we're going to talk about. Something new is being created. It's being created because of technical change. Uh, there is an economist, he's a Nobel Prize uh, winning uh, economist, and he, he basically said all growth in the industrial world has come uh, from technical change. In other words, it's not from inputs and, and a host of other things. It's technology changing the way business is done. And that, that is what we've witnessed in the digital res uh, revolution, is that we, those of you who are old enough, we've seen how businesses have had to change because technology has forced it on uh, those individuals. Uh, there is a change that is taking place right now the world of direct sales and in the world, uh, the larger world of uh, retail. And that uh, we appreciate that this isn't something that we're going to do because, oh, it looks exciting. This is something that, uh, that has to be done in order for us to uh, stay current, in order for us to uh, stay modern. And in the process, as we do something that is new, we will open up new markets and we'll open up new revenue sources and that will open up new opportunities for a lot more people that will give us a greater return than what we've been getting over the course of the last little while. And we know that this is true. Nuskin uh, started to support uh, online or uh, social media sales. Those women who participated in social media sales, many of them have made significant amounts of money because they had tapped into a new way to communicate. And so this is something we're very used to and that we, we know. And that... Uh, that the AI revolution, the artificial revolution, is as big as anything that we've ever seen come out of the tech world. It means that businesses are going to change the way they do business. And it isn't just individual uh, aspects of business. And you all see AI, uh, you know, in, in your life. You see information uh, giving you uh, avenues. You see it on Google as they where you're going to go when you're going to do it, uh, and uh, when you make travel arrangements, they put up maps of uh, the you're going to land to. All of that is artificial intelligence uh, with, uh, attached to an, an algorithm that allows uh, uh, Google to understand what is going to take place in your future, and that they uh, then they send you down the road that we're maybe able to sell you advertising is that we're going to see systems change, how uh, businesses do business. And that that is what we're going to talk about right now. Uh, because New Skin is going to change the system. And those companies, our competitors that don't understand this, those companies that don't, uh, aren't going to change their system to participate, uh, they're going to be left behind. And there's nothing they can do about it unless they embrace it. And it's all because of information. Information has been said in this new world to have more value than money. And those of you who are movie people, and I, I like this story because, uh, because I like sports, and it is a, a visual representation of what, uh, what I mean by uh, the, the, the statement that information is going to change systems and how things work. If, the, if you watch the, uh, the movie Moneyball, Moneyball is about baseball, and it's about uh, the advent of uh, statistics coming in uh, to baseball, and that uh, it changed the way uh, people looked at how baseball players were chosen, who was valuable and who was not. 
And so that if you watch Brad Pitt as the uh, general manager of the Oakland Athletics, uh, you see him embrace this concept and using numbers and algorithms in terms of what is valuable as far as baseball is concerned. And then you see him around the table in one scene with these veterans who think that they are experts in baseball and they don't understand that the system of baseball was changing. And so as a consequence, uh, the athletics with virtually no, uh, uh, no money, they become competitors. They are constantly in the race uh, for the divisional championship. And the, uh, the end scene is that uh, the uh, general manager of uh, the A's is uh, with the owner of the Boston Red, the Red Sox. And the owner of the Red Sox says that if everyone isn't breaking his team down along the lines that you have uh, described, he says they're all going to be left behind. And that is the importance when systems change and technology forces the change of system. If you want to keep that analogy in sports one step further, uh, basketball is not the same business as it was just 15 years ago. And statistics and information and algorithms have changed it. It used to be you had a seven foot one center who shot baskets two or three feet from the hoop and that those were the most important people in uh, basketball. No more. Statistics have shown it's the guard that shoots 10 to 12 three-point uh, uh, shots every game. The most important shot now in basketball is the three-point shot from the quarter. Who's important has changed, why they're important has changed, and that has all uh, come because algorithms have opened up the whole idea of what's important, what's valuable, and how things can be done more effectively and how more success can be gained by a greater understanding of the industry that you're in. And that's what's going to occur. As you take a step back and say, okay, what is it that they're trying to achieve? And you say they want to achieve the influx of so much information from so many different sources that they can make the productivity of the business so much more productive, not just for themselves, but also for the distributors, that the income creation is going to dwarf what has taken place in the past. And that it doesn't take much of a look uh, to understand how this might work. All you have to do is look at uh, their, their first uh, step with Vera, where they're not even using an AI foundation. They're using uh, basic metrics. They're finding out uh, who uses and when do they use uh, the uh, Lumi Spa uh, IO. They found out uh, uh, the time of day. It helps them to know how they can uh, communicate with people. And so it's the first little step that is opening their eyes in terms of how their products are used when they're used, who's using them, and that that will allow them to uh, make uh, uh, decisions in terms of how they communicate with those customers, how they can sell more things to those customers through the power of information, and how they can enhance uh, the business through additional retail sales uh, that they would help to, uh, to uh, develop. Uh, the, one of the core understandings of economics is the value of specialization. Uh, a company becomes more profitable and more valuable when they specialize their, uh, the participants. And that you can see that through, uh, through an AI in, uh, involvement with uh, retail sales, you can see where the company could collect information. They would know when people use the products. They would know when the connection of one product to, to another product was established. They would know when they could advertise uh, in, uh, or advertise uh, information about their product line, at what time of day, at what season. All of these things will add to a greater amount of retailing and consumption. And with it, as it flows through the marketing plan, a greater income for the uh, uh, participants who collect that information and who build the networks. But it isn't just on the product side that AI offers us such a large uh, possibility, is that if you look at the information flow that uh, we need as distributors, uh, it would be unbelievably important to us to know uh, what is the percentage chance of a 27-year-old male who's un unemployed to uh, be successful in pursuing the business? Uh, what about a 45-year-old man at the height of his career? What about a young woman who has started their, her career but decided to, uh, uh, to pursue something else? Uh, 
there's so many questions about who becomes successful and why, and those questions are unanswered, even by the more the most expert of distributors. And that AI offers us the, the, the possibility of collecting that information, sharing that information with the, with the distributors so that we know who's going to be successful, who's not, and the path, and the path that they have to take. A 27-year-old man would take a different path than a 67-year-old woman. And yet, historically, we've taught people to do the very same thing. If we segment, uh, if we break up the, the uh, distributorship uh, uh, into segments, we can be more effective in terms of the creation of leadership and the creation of our network. And that creation of that network increases the amount of information that flows to the company that helps them to create more income through product sales that increases our income that helps us to build uh, the network to a larger size. And it all comes from the flow of information as it passes from the distributors into the company to the customers out to the distributors and back again. And that it is different. Uh, success in, in technological advance, uh, advancement is not just small ball success. It's when systems change. And that's what NewSkip intends to do. It isn't that they're going to add one new market. They're going to glean markets through the change of the system, the system of direct sales, how people are found, how they're trained, how, they're, uh, how their information uh, provides us an avenue to sell more products. And in that process, just so you understand, in that process, we also will create more and different products. One of the things that technologies allows us to do is to create different products because we see different opportunities that emanate out of the information flow. And so that it isn't that we'll sell more of the existing products is that that information flow will help us sell more products in general. Maybe there'll be informational products that we shared in, in, in uh, you know, uh, shared with other uh, health conscious people, health conscious businesses. There is just a host of things that can take place when you step back and look at how the business works, when information fits in to the middle of the business. just say uh, this. I'm not interested in say in AI uh, filling the, a need uh, in this corner or that corner. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the AI's ability to change the system of business. It is the difference if we go back in technological advancement, it is what took place with the advent of electricity. Electricity could uh, pop on a, a light bulb, that was great. But the true uh, financial impact of electricity wasn't until uh, factories created brand new systems of, uh, of, uh, of development of their products uh, using electricity at its core. In other words, so that's where we are right now with AI. AI is filling a little void here, a little uh, void there. It tr uh, creates a product here that it's uh, in important. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about system-wide change. Uh, to where uh, companies that do not embrace that, those systems are at risk of collapse. And I want it understood that that risk of collapse of our competitors opens up new pools of potential uh, uh, distributors for us within NewSkin. Uh, if you look over NewSkin over the course of the last few years, you can see several things that I think it's important for us to understand is that the people who have become very, very successful over those years have been basically been young women uh, using social media uh, to uh, spread the product sales into a broader array of, uh, of uh, a, a, a broader environment. So that's been great. But over the course of those last five or six years, virtually no men have been sponsored. And the nature and the culture of the company has been affected uh, by that. So let's take a look at that alone and see what the upside potential of changing that. An information-based uh, company uh, that uses AI, that the, uh, that the sponsorship story uh, is based on information, uh, artificial intelligence, product uh, production, all of those open up the door to male participation. So in the United States alone, 
That's 160 million people. Uh, when we went into Japan and we developed that billion dollars worth of revenue in Japan, they had 130 million people. And so that when I say that we can go into the male segment of the market that we haven't touched for years, I'm saying that we can open up a market uh, that uh, holds uh, uh, you know, the potential of a billion dollars just in the United States, just in the fact that we haven't been participating in the male uh, market. And so that that is part of opening up a new market with a new story, male participation. The, the, the biggest demographic group that is uh, taking place in the United States are people who are over the age of uh, 55. That group is growing the very fastest. It is growing where other segments of the population is shrinking. And if you create an AI system where the company is doing, let's say, the bulk of retailing and that the, the distributors are being, uh, are being specialized in terms of connecting people to the company and uh, gleaning information, that means that people who are over the age of five have a far greater chance of becoming successful in a meaningful way. And that means tens of millions of people come into our marketplace with the upside potential being increased proportionately. And so that AI offers us a pathway into markets that we see clearly, that are right in front of us, that are our next door neighbors, and that uh, hold the potential of increasing revenue, not by two times, but by four times and six times. And that is, that is by itself, is a tremendous advent in terms of the opportunity as we, as we look at it right now. But AI holds the potential of doing so much more because we're creating a new system. If you want to know the impact of how a new system in retailing can be, uh, can be uh, successful, all you have to do is look at Amazon. Amazon came in and selling books online. But ultimately, Amazon's success wasn't that they were selling books online, is that they, create, uh, they changed the system of retailing online. And that's what I'm suggesting. AI has the potential of changing the nature of direct sales. And one of the things that you can see in Amazon, you can see they've tried to personalize it with the recommendations and reviews, all these different things. Well, we're already there. Uh, the ad advantage that we have in direct, size, uh, in direct sales is that we are personalized. That is the core attribute of who we are. And so that in terms of the world of collecting information, you're going to give your information to uh, your sister or to your brother or to your mother or to your uh, son. All of those things are going to give us an advantage in a world that is changing dramatically and that I cannot underestimate the implications of that for those people who build networks and are able to participate in a new system uh, and a system that basically, if you look at it, uh, will allow people to create more money with less effort because the company specializing in the movement of products uh, will be able to move more products uh, online uh, than we do one to uh, another and that, that we're ch we'll change the system of how direct sales works. And that, you know, I, you, know, I, you know, I love all those people who are in those other companies, but I'm very competitive. And so I wanna take every dime of their revenue and every person who's in, the, in their company. And I think that the possibility of enlarging ourselves as other people struggle is a very real possibility as we change the system of how it all works. Uh, the numbers that are associated with the advent of AI into the uh, marketplace uh, go up to $15 trillion. That's with a T. $15 trillion will be added into the marketplace because of uh, AI's uh, in, uh, uh, ingesting into the world economy. That is greater than the economy of uh, China and India combined. And so when you really look at the numbers in terms of what what penetration is, is, is when you uh, look at a, a, an artificial intelligence environment, it's overwhelming. In terms of system, or not systems, but in terms of assessment, let's not look at those other assessments uh, uh, right now. Let's look, let's look at what's taking place on Vera and the, our assessment. 
Uh, so the assessment at the beginning, people who took the assessment, uh, and so they they started this just recently. Last time uh, I spoke, they had 85,000 people who had taken the assessment. Eight per, uh, uh, percent of the people, when they took the assessment, ordered products. Uh, and then over the course of the next couple of months, that 8% has now grown to 35%. And so what we begin to see is the confirmation you look at Amazon as an aggressive forward-looking company. They're moving into health care. They're moving into health generally. And they're not doing it, uh, uh, you know, as a, oh, let's, let's try this. They're doing it because they have looked at the numbers and they understand that how health works is changing. And they want to be a part of that change. And so in terms of assessments, in terms of DNA, in terms of all of those things, those things would just be part of the information flow out of which recommendations would be made. Uh, and so that uh, the more information we have, the greater the, the value of those recommendations, the more accuracy uh, that those recommendations will have in terms of meeting uh, people uh, with a product that they want because we understand them through the assessments and through the collection of DNA, uh, through the uh, collection of information outside of those realms. DNA is only a part of the collection uh, process. The gathering process is the key. Uh, as people theorize in terms of who's going to be successful uh, with, uh, with artificial intelligence, uh, they, they have come to understand those people who collect the most information will be the, uh, the, the most successful people uh, in the transition that we see taking place. I did a fair amount of traveling when I was uh, uh, during COVID and to get back into the country, I would have to take tests, uh, you know, that was home uh, delivered. So I would take my test. Uh, I would be on the phone with someone. Uh, it has broken down the barriers of uh, what people do on their own at home to understand what their, uh, uh, what their medical needs are or what their, their beauty needs are, what their skin needs are. We're not going to get into the world of, you know, trying to do prognosis on people's, uh, you know, cancer or that. That's not where we're, we're headed. But we can be helpful in terms of uh, genetic markers that will help people understand uh, what, what they face. And just, just so you know that there's an end game in this. Uh, out there in the digital world, over the course uh, of the last little while, Artificial intelligence has allowed uh, companies to build digital twins. And uh, it's not just health companies or companies uh, that are deal with biology. Is that you have people who are building airplanes by creating a digital twin, uh, which means they create that plane digitally before they waste their money trying to create it physically. And that uh, there are athletic teams that uh, build digital twins of their players so they know that certain positions are prone to certain, uh, uh, certain injuries, that certain exercises prevent those injuries, that certain genetics lead people to uh, decline in their, their sports ability at a certain age. All of those things will emanate out of the collection of information and the creation of a digital twin. And that we will see the rise of digital twins, not just in terms of, of hard, uh, uh, hard manufacturing, but we uh, are seeing the advent of digital twins in the world of health and that uh, we can collect information with a digital twin as an end goal. And that's part of a systematic change in terms of how people buy products, why they buy products, how they understand their health and how they understand how they can maintain their health and maintain youthful, uh, youthful vigor deeper into their older age. The first conversation I had with them about digital twins was more than two years ago. And so that this is something that they've thought through over a long period of time and that they're going to work towards as well. But it's all part of a revolutionary, uh, uh, revolutionary change in the system of how products are sold, how products are created, and how we interact with our customers and our distributors. Wow. reinforce what Jeff said, because Jeff said something that's unbelievably important. And that is that it's going to go faster. Uh, we've, many of us have gone and pre-worked uh, different markets, whether they were foreign markets or whether they're markets here in the United States, and that they had a certain sequence that we 
we participated in. And so that we went into uh, Japan and we went into Australia and we went in uh, to Taiwan and that we, we spent uh, a year uh, laying that foundation uh, in, in those uh, new markets. But what Jeff said is absolutely right. It's probably the most important thing that has been said today. And that is, it's going to go faster. And that one of the reasons it has to do with that non-disclosure. We have been talking about uh, this, this fabric that, uh, that is being discussed right here. The last time we met, the company added uh, 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 an observation and uh, a commitment uh, to something that we had not talked about that had to do with uh, Vera. And it was like, oh, they get it. They understand what is taking place fully and completely. And that it was like, all right, this is gonna make the business develop faster. And that th there are some issues that they have to work through, but it, was, it wasn't just confirmation of their commitment of what we were doing, but it was also their realization that this is going to happen very quickly. People are going to develop uh, uh, networks. Those networks are going to turn into income-producing uh, income networks even before we open up the doors. 